Okay, so today's lesson then is um, about turning left, emerging left, turning left and then turning right um, from a main road into minor roads. Okay, so on test, obviously you'll be asked to turn left or turn right many times on your uh, 40 minute driving test. And then they'll be looking, surreptitiously, but they will be looking for you to carry out a routine which will be basically mirror, signal, position, speed, gear and look. Um, and it's advisable that you get most of that in on test day because if they start seeing there's a routine that you're not getting all of that in, potentially that's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing you have to realise is that when you're driving down the road, the road that you're driving down to you is the main road. Yep. When you're crossing the single broken lines, you're going from major road into minor road. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you have priority over anything that's on the side roads. But when you turn into the side road, that then becomes the main road to you at that point, And then any road you turn off from would again become the minor road. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, major road, crossing broken lines into minor road. So the first thing the examiner could say to you is take the next turning on the left. So about eight to ten car lengths away mm -hmm. from where you actually want to turn, you check your centre and left mirror to make sure it's safe behind mm -hmm. and to the left hand side to make sure there's no motorbikes or cyclists or anything coming down the side. Then you indicate left down because obviously you're turning left. So it's going to be mirror signal Let's change that so it's mirror signal and then the position of your car stays the same in the lane yeah. normally that's going to be in the middle of the lane but on a wider lane it would be approximately one meter from the curb so mirror signal position speed so you're reducing the speed now of the car because obviously you want to turn you can't turn at 30 miles an hour that would be very exciting and you want to go probably into what gear normally on approach to a junction second good so appro approaching a junction in second gear you could always have the option of coming down into first gear if you need to yeah. closer to the junction if you think it's a bit sharp or there's a car part or something like that so then it's um, reducing speed second gear and then you have to look and you have to look all around here to make sure it's safe all the way through. Mm -hmm. So looking for any pedestrians that may be walking across the road. That's a bit jaggedy one, isn't it? Uh, making sure there's no one crossing the road in front of you. And then make sure that you look here to make sure no one's going to turn in front of you from the other side. Remembering the car turning right has the least priority. However, we've got an L plate on the car, so that's a license to actually sort of cut you up really and get in front. So be careful they, they're stopping and not turning in front of you. Make sure you look into the road to make sure it's safe and clear that you can actually carry out the procedure you're about to begin. There could be a car parked on the side there, and if you're not looking into the road, you must be looking to the direction you're going to drive before you drive there. So as you come round, if you're looking over there at that car, let's say, there's a possibility you could just drive straight into the car, um, you could think, oh my word, there's a car there, come round straight into the oncoming bus. Yeah. So it's very important that you look into the road before you turn into the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. They will be looking at you to make sure that you're looking in the direction you're going to drive before you drive there. Okay. Okay. What other dangers do you think there could be turning into that road? What, where else could be the danger? Park cars on the side, or yeah, that could be a danger. Certainly, um, I like park cars hiding like pedestrians, so like yeah, well running then. out. Yeah, so you could have a park car there, another one there. Gotta be very sympathetic with my artwork, by the way. <laughs> and you could have someone walking in between. Yeah, so what would be the best thing to do in that scenario? Emergency stop? Yeah, you're probably only doing about 10 miles an hour, so you wouldn't want an emergency stop, but certainly come in possibly a little slower mm. and have better observations just to make sure it's safe. Oh, As right. you come in, 
look down the left hand side of the cars to see if there's anything there that could be a problem as well. Yeah. So it's all part of your hazard awareness that you'd pass on your theory and hazard awareness test, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So look everywhere basically to get the best advantage as to what's happening when you come round into that road. Okay? And then once you're into the new road, check your centre and right mirror yeah. before you accelerate preferably to make sure that you know what's come into that road behind you because someone could come round, think I'm not going to be stuck behind that learner, I'm going to come out and round and if you haven't looked in your mirrors you may not know that that car is trying to come past you. And if you start accelerating away as that car's trying to accelerate away where have you left that car on your right? Um, wait, if what if? So if you're driving down there yeah. And a car comes round behind you mm. and immediately tries to overtake. Yeah. But you start accelerating away. Where's that car? Behind. He's on the wrong side of the road. Oh, right, yeah. So you're pulling away, he's pulling away, and you've left him again on the wrong side of the road. Let's just say round the corner comes the 44 ton truck. Now, where is he? Probably dead. Possibly. So, all because you didn't check in your mirrors mm. and allow him to come past you to um, make sure he was safe. Yeah. So, must always check your mirrors before you start increasing your speed. Mm -hmm. Okay? Good. Any questions on turning left, major to minor? One small thing is make sure that there's not a junction before the one that you want. Right. Okay, so don't start indicating for that junction before that one there, let's say. Because obviously you're indicating for the incorrect junction. The last thing you want is for the examiner to go like that on test, because that would be a game over. They've interfered with the car, so um, unfortunately that would be a bad day on test. Okay? Mm -hmm. Good. So that's basically major into minor turning left. So turning right, turning right, is pretty much the same thing the other way around. A lot more dangerous though. Why is it a lot more dangerous to turn right than turn left? Because you're cutting across the road, the other car uses yeah. coming the other way. So you're crossing the path of oncoming traffic, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Well done. So, same thing, opposite way around. So centre and right mirror indicate right. Now your position is slightly different. You're going to want to come over just left of the centre line in the road, just so that your door mirror is left of that uh, road, yeah, that centre line. Yeah. So you mustn't be on it or over it, because obviously you could be in conflict with any cars coming the other way. So driving down, reducing speed now back into second gear as we did before, and where do you think it's, where, where do you think you've got to look to make sure it's safe? Where's the first observation going to be? Well, that the road and then in into the yeah. road. So the road ahead yeah. and then into the road to make sure it's safe. So there's two things you have to remember, two golden rules you have to remember, is that you mustn't make anybody break, stop, slow down or change direction because of a direct action that you've carried out. Mm -hmm. So if you swerved in front of an oncoming car, then you're going to make him break. Yeah. So therefore you haven't shown good judgment and potentially the examiner is going to dual control you anyway. And as soon as they touch the dual controls, game over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Likewise, you may come up to that junction and you see a car six or seven hundred metres down the road. And you think, hmm, don't like that. I think I'm going to hold back. Yeah. So you wait and you wait and you wait. And cars are coming up behind you and there's more cars behind you and you're still waiting, by that time they're probably beeping the horn as well. So then when that car goes, you decide to go. So potentially that's going to be a problem on test as well um, because that's undue hesitation um, and again, you're not showing good judgment as to when you can turn into the road. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that you can turn safely into the road um, but show good judgment as to when you hold back and when you can actually go. Yeah. One of the things they do say um, is that if you imagine yourself standing over there on the left-hand side and walking into that road, 
before yeah. that car would hit you, then you should be able to turn into that road without being of an interference to the car coming ahead. Mm -hmm. And then you check your centre and right mirror before you accelerate away, just to make sure it's safe and clear. You must always be looking into the road before you turn into the road. You must always be able to complete the manoeuvre that you're about to begin. It is exceptionally important that you look in the road and that you can complete the actual manoeuvre. The last thing you want is to start turning and then find the cars stopped in the road, yeah. just in the road, so that means you can't go in any further because there could be the bus coming down at 40 miles an hour on your left hand side and that's an uncomfortable place to be, mm -hmm. okay, as you can imagine. So you must make sure that you look into the road before you turn into the road and it's safe and clear and that you can complete the manoeuvre that you're about to begin. Yeah. Okay? Extremely important that you do that. Good. Um, when turning right, you mustn't turn too soon. If you turn too soon, what do you think would happen? You're going to cut into the on the yeah. road that you're going into on the wrong Good. side. You're going to cut across. That's called a right uh, corner cut. Again, that's pretty much a fail on test. Um, because it's incorrect lane positioning and could be quite dangerous in actual fact, so it could be quite serious. And also, you don't want to turn too late. What would happen if you turned too late, do you think? You're going to like go across here on the curve and Yeah, stuff. well done. So potentially you're going to come across, up the curb with the left hand wheels, back down, you won't be able to handle the steering, come across to the side of the road and come across like that. Yeah. That wouldn't be a good day on test, I can tell you that. Right. So and also you're going to scare any pedestrians on the path as well. Yeah. So the ideal spot to turn is when the front of the car is central to the actual road. Okay. Yeah. A good way of doing that is when the line there is just touching the underneath of your mirror. That means the front of your car is normally central to the road you want to turn into, and if it's safe and clear, just turn straight in. Right. New road, new mirrors, make sure you check your centre and right mirror before accelerating away. Okay? Yep. Good, good. Any questions on turning right? Nope. Okay, so filter lanes or slip lanes if you want to call them that to actually turn right. Why do you think they're there on a road? So that you're able to, like, turn that way. People so can... yeah, you're going to turn to the right. Yeah. But why have a filter lane there uh, at all? Why, why do you think that they want you to come over from your normal road position into because that filter lane? People are going to be going straight on the other lane, so it just makes it easier for you to. Yeah. So you're not going to hinder and hold back anybody behind you. Yeah. So it's normally on a busy road. Mhm. Mm so therefore, um, if you get correctly into the filter lane people can carry on and proceed normally behind yeah. you. Mm -hmm. It's important that you do get the car into the filter lane. Okay, as much as you possibly can. There's several around the test routes in High Wycombe that you should be able to get the whole car into the, into the actual filter lane. Yeah. So if you can get it in there, make sure the whole car is in there. Mm -hmm. What you don't want is the car half in and half out because cars may be able to get down the side of you, lorries or buses may not. Yeah. So that could be an issue. And the last thing you want to do, or not do rather, is have the car at an angle, a sort of 30 degree angle. So you think you're sitting in the filter lane, but really the back end of the car is sticking over to the side. Yeah. If there is a filter lane to get into, get into it. You'll know if a filter lane's coming up because there'll be hatchings in the road on approach to the turning that you want. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so if there's hatchings, there's going to be some form of um, filter lane to actually get into and out the way of any other uh, traffic behind you. Does that make sense? Yep. Good. So, a little picture story now. You have to listen to the words that I say very carefully. So you are the red car turning right. You can't turn right because of the yellow car coming down. You can't even turn early because of the grey car there. Yep. This fan, the guy's on his phone, where he shouldn't probably be, sorting out the parts for his next job, hasn't realised you've stopped until you've got to there. You've driven up, you've stopped the car, you've turned the steering wheel to the right, mm -hmm. in readiness to turn right. 
he hasn't seen until there that you've stopped. He's hit the brakes as hard as he can, but he's going to hit you and it's going to hurt. What's going to happen next? What if I was about, if I was going to move out of his way? So you're waiting, you can't move out of his way because the yellow car is there, mm. coming forward. The grey car is there because he can't even turn early. You've drawn up, you've turned your steering wheel to the right. You'd have to carry on straight, wouldn't you? Mm, you? You won't even see him because he's behind you. You're looking ahead to judge what's going on. Well, then he's going to crash into you then. So he's going to crash into you and it's going yeah. to hurt, but what's going to happen next? What did I say you did with your steering wheel? Lose control of it. So you, I said you'd drawn up and you'd turn the steering wheel to the right. So if he hits you from behind, where are you going oh, to be pushed? Into the So into you're going to be road. pushed right across the other side of the road. Oh, yeah. This car could be doing 60 miles an hour down here. And then that car will hit you on the side mm -hmm. at 60 miles an hour. At 60 miles an hour, that car will then push you into that car. So you've just turned a disaster into an absolute and total catastrophe, purely for the fact that you've turned your steering wheel to the right. So golden rule number one, pull up, keep your steering wheel straight until you're ready to turn. Yeah. That way, if you do get hit up the back, then at least you'll be pushed forward, hopefully, rather than into the oncoming mm. traffic. Yeah. It may not be a car there, it could be a 44 tonne car transporter. That probably um, would go directly over the top of your car. Mm -hmm. So that wouldn't be a good day. No. So make sure that you keep the steering wheel straight before you turn. And again, just make sure you look into the road before you turn into the road and make sure that you can complete the manoeuvre. Many people these days are hit because they are not concentrating on what they are doing when they're crossing the road. They just sort of tend to walk out. And one reason above all other reasons yeah. are the reason for people being hit by cars through not concentrating. Can you think what that reason may be? Then like being on their phone or like texting or something. Yeah, exactly that. So you'll, you'll see it all the time, people wander around on their phone, texting away, and they walk just straight out into the road. Mm -hmm. And they don't even think they've probably even gone into a road. And the next thing is bang, they've been hit by the car that's turning in or coming out, whatever. Yeah. So always look to make sure that you can complete the manoeuvre that you're about to begin before you begin it. Okay, and the road is clear that you want to get into. Okay, well done. Any questions at all? No. Okay, excellent. So we'll try and put some of that practice um, in on the road now, shall we? Yeah. Okay.